such a joy to be with you. Is that okay? I know my voice is loud, so I'll spare you. Um, to be with you guys this morning, my name is Noelle. If I don't know you, a little bit about my uh, backstory. I had the joy and honor of um, growing up here at Grace Chapel. Um, no, it's good. It's fine. Um, I started coming here. It's just a really special place in my heart. Um, I started coming here when I was, it's fine. Um, <laughs> it's fine. It's great. Um, I started coming here when I was a junior higher. I had the privilege of meeting my husband in youth group. So high school, junior high moms, take heart. Oh, he's calling right now. It's fine. Um, I, we did not plan that. Um, and then the Lord allowed us to do ministry at Grace Chapel for my husband got to be on staff for 15 years being a pastor until he called us to move this last August to Tulare, the land of Tulare. It is a mission field. It's in uh, Central California. We're looking for people to come if you wanna. Just don't help. Just don't help PC. It's fine. Um, just kidding. Well, I am just so thankful for you guys. It is a joy and honor to be with you. When I think of insight, um, Philippians one three to seven is how I view you, and I just. I'm going to go ahead and read it. I thank God in all remembrance of you, always in my prayer of mine, for you are making my prayer with joy because you have partnered in the gospel from the first day until now. And I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. It is right for me to feel this way about you because I hold you in my heart. For you are all partakers with me in grace. And when I think of insight and the sweet 10 years I was able to have with you guys before we moved in August, that's what I think of. And it just, um, I read my Bible differently when I think of you, of just how when Paul says that he earns and he groans, like the Lord is just so kind to, like, when you're reading your Bible and you just see, like, I get that now, and I just love you so much. Um, okay, I'm done with crying. It's good. Oh, you're so sweet. Thanks. Um, okay, well, this time, last December, I was helping with Insight, enjoying all of this. I had no idea that God was going to put Tulare in our laps, but God's plans are bigger than ours and better and he is worthy. Speaking of plans, Mary had plans, and the mother of Jesus had plans just like us. She's young, waiting to be married, excited about her new home with Joseph that Joseph was, Joseph was building, looking forward. So you didn't want to see my boogers. Looking forward to marriage with Joseph and Joseph building or and building a family but everything changed when God sent an angel to speak to her and I'm going to just read Luke um Luke 1 26 and this is going to set up where we are today we're going to be in Mary's song of praise but before I just didn't want us to miss the sweetness of this. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel sent from God to the city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to be married or to a man named Jesus the house in the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at this saying and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son. 
and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord will give to him the throne of David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. And, Jesus, and Mary said to the angel, how will this be since I am a virgin? And the angel answered her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son and this and is in the sixth month with her who was called barren for nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold, I am a servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed. She was, uh, Mary's humble response to the great news encouraged me. My prayer is that it will encourage you today. And now, all of those plans that Mary once had changed. She was about to be pregnant, unexpected, and not by Joseph. This was not part of her plan, but Mary's humble humility and obedience to follow the Lord is something we can all learn from. Her, she allowed her plans to be put aside and God to be in charge of everything. This morning, we will see Mary, Mary freely give to God four big areas of her life as she anticipates life looking very differently than what she had initially thought. But before we dive in, did you know that God actually loves taking our burdens, our anxieties, our most intimate thoughts, our concerns? In fact, he invites us to give them these things in Psalm 55, 22. He says, cast your burdens upon the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never allow the righteous to be shaken. In her song, when Mary was, we will see that she freely gives her emotions, her trust, her worship, and her patience. She did not ask God to prove himself. She did not ask to have the details to see the end. Nor did she demand all of the questions to be answered. She simply breaks out into a song that I so wish we could have been there to hear. But first, let's pray. Lord, I just thank you for insight. I thank you for the time that we have together. Lord, I just pray that you would allow us... Um, to hear what you want us to hear, Lord. I thank you for the example of Mary. Lord, I just pray that you um, would just be moving in hearts, Lord, that we would not grow weary in whatever season you have us, that we would trust you, that we would know that your plans are bigger than ours and that you, are lo you love us and you are for us. Lord, please bless our time in your word. In your son's name, amen. So our first point is Mary gave her emotions. Um, oh, but first, so what we read in Luke, um, Mary, and I was talking to Sammy about this when I was talking about what I was speaking, and she just, I love the body of women we have around us where we can just learn different things from each other. Um, and she pointed out, to me, a sermon that she had just listened to about from Tim Keller, that um, what I just read, how she said to the Lord, may it be as you say, that was her intellectual surrender. It's like, okay, Lord, like, I am a servant of the Lord. May it be to you as it is. And then she goes to Elizabeth, and she receives encouragement from the body and then we see her emotional surrender in her sweet song. Um, and so Mary, Mary gives her emotions to God. This, passion, this passage we are in today is found in Luke 1, 46 to 56. 
It is a song of praise Mary sings after hearing the news she will be pregnant. Luke 1, 46 to 47. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. I love the idea of Mary magnifying the Lord. We usually will help our kiddos with a magnifying glass, and it, we're usually helping them make something small look big so that they can check out all of the details. I don't know about you, but my kids love finding dead bugs, and that is what we do. Um, it's gross. It is homeschool. Yet here we have Mary, who is small, just a simple girl in Israel, who is saying she will magnify something huge. How can this be? John Piper says, the only people whose soul can truly magnify the Lord are people like Mary. People who acknowledge their lowly estate and are overwhelmed to be led by the magnificent God. Humility is key in receiving God's news well. Sometimes news is not what we want to hear. Cancer, loss, hardship, relationship struggles, or moving is not news we typically love hearing. Mary choosing to magnify the Lord is only possible for this sweet woman because she considered herself a humble servant. The most freeing place to be as a Christian is to hold our plans loosely and allow God to work through us for his glory. Mary did not huff or puff about the news she did not roll her eyes she gave her emotions to god and magnifying him i once heard this illustration about trains we're all trains and it depends on who is leading your train as believers in christ christ should always be leading our train sometimes that gets mixed up and our we let our emotions lead our train emotions are great the lord created us with emotions but they should not be leading our train. You think back of when, I think, I think back of when I've let my emotions speak before looking at the truth, and it just doesn't go great, guys. I'm not going to lie. Like, that's when I have my selfish response to my kiddos of, you're messing my whole life up, which is a lie, and it is false, and it is one where you must have the Lord leading you instead of your emotions. Um, when Mary handed over her emotions and decided to rejoice, she is modeling for us what to do when God puts something that we're not expecting in our laps. Uh, how? How does she do this? How does she magnify the Lord? And this is something that I just love so much is um, she worships, but I firmly believe she knew her word. Because if you look at Mary's prayer to the Lord, her song, it um, resembles Hannah's prayer in 1 Samuel 2, 1 to 10, and I'll just read a little bit. This is when Hannah was barren, and it, this has always just been super special to me because me and my husband went through a time where we just didn't know what looking, having kids looked like, and just Hannah was just such an inspiration. Um, and this is when Samuel, she just gives Samuel over, um, to the, to, to be, um, in the priesthood of the house of the Lord. And she says, my heart is exalted and my horn is exalted in the Lord. My mouth derides my enemies because I will rejoice in your salvation. And I love the fact that Hannah was an inspiration to Mary, and they can both be an inspiration to us. Um, emotions are a constant surrender to the Lord. It's not a one-time thing. Oh, friends, I wish it was a one-time thing, but our God is just, just so good to us that he knows we need those reminders. Um, number two, Mary puts her trust in God. Luke 1, 46, or 48 to 49, it continues, for he looked at the humble estate of his servant. 
For behold, from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. Mary knew that, that God was good, that he loved her, and even though she was going to be pregnant, he was working. The call is simple, but simple is not always easy. She sings, he who is mighty has done great things for me. I think she realized even at a young age that the person she would give birth to would be the same person who would save her from her sins. Mary had found the answer to her sin problem. God's son, Jesus, would go down to earth so she would rise, or so she would raise him and he would die for her. Can you imagine the gravity of those words? She knew that her son would one day be killed for her. As moms, we hope our children will outlast us. Mary knows that the Lamb of God would be the sacrifice for her sins. She is going to, she is going to raise him, change his diapers, put him to bed, and train him up. When God gives us an unexpected plans or news, we can trust him. We or he has not just done great things for Mary. But he has also done great things for you. Let's go back to the Old Testament for a minute. Remember all the trials that David went through when he was on the run from King Saul? In Psalm 69, uh, David, King David is in deep trouble. Phrases like, the waters have come up to my neck. I am weary my crying out loud, my throat is parched. And yet, while he waits on the Lord, he is also able to say near the end of the same psalm, Psalm 69:30, I will praise the name of the God, or I will praise the name of God with my song. I will magnify him with thanksgiving. His circumstances did not dictate his attitude. That's the thing about our relationship with God. His timing is not our timing. His plans are better than our plans. Remember Isaiah 55, verses 8 and 9. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways, declares the Lord. As, for as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. Sometimes God has us in seasons of waiting. Mary had to wait for Jesus, and King David had to wait to become king. I want to touch on waiting for a minute. Some of you are in long seasons of waiting. Can I encourage you not to grow weary? Do not give up your trust in God. Keep waiting. Keep seeking his face. He is with you and he is for you. Paul David Tripp says, Waiting on God is not what you get at the end of your waiting. It is who you become as you have waited. And also, in forms of waiting, you just cannot discount what the Lord is doing in your kid's life as they are in seasons of waiting. And this was best modeled for me um, in January of 2021. My husband got to be a live liver donor and we all moved to San Francisco for 53 days. It was our joy and our honor, um, but it was hard. And that was my literal season of waiting where Jeremy was in surgery for nine, they said eight or nine hours and he went past nine hours because he had a big liver. I said, okay, great. But it is that constant strain of reigning in your emotions and trusting the Lord. Because when it got to 901 hours, guys, I was like, well, he's in heaven. <laughs> yes, no, no emotions. Slow the boat. 
Um, and just, you just can never discount what the Lord is doing in the waiting of your kids because that season prepared us for this season that we're in now. That we, us being gone for 53 days in San Francisco at the height of COVID, holy cannoli has prepared us to move to Tulare and to say, yes, Jesus really is worth it. It is not about our comfort. It's about his glory. Okay, so that's our second point. Mary gave her emotions to God. She gave her trust. Now let's see what Mary sings next. She decides to worship him. Luke 1, 50 to 54 and his mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his army. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the mighty from the thrones and exalted those of humble estate. He has, been fill or he has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. How does the soul glorify the Lord? How can lowly Mary make much of God? She magnifies God by worshiping him. Um, in my life, in seasons of waiting, worship has been tender to me. It is a way to remember what is true in the car. Um, I will make different playlists. Sweet Sadie shared with me a playlist that was just so encouraging in a time of just unknown. Um, and I just would encourage you to start passing this on to your kids now. When you don't know what to say, just put on music that glorifies the Lord. And we found in hard homeschool days, we pray, we restart, we put on some worship music, and we give it to the Lord. Um, when God throws our plans, all of our plans out the window, we can learn from Mary by choosing to worship. Her response is our example. She worships him by recounting how he has kept his promises. She goes back to what is true. When the world wants us to believe the lies, it's a constant battle of taking off the lies and putting on truth. We can only do that by being in God's word. Remember back in Genesis 3, when Adam and Eve sinned, God promises, tell, or promises Eve to, by telling the serpent one day will be, will be sent someone to crush him. He will send somebody to crush him. And now he is fulfilling this promise by sharing the news that Mary will give birth to the Messiah. Did she complain? Did she say, this is not really a good time, Lord. She didn't. She worships the Lord. Imagine how many frustrations will be eliminated when we decide to worship rather than complain. Paul David Tripp, his new saying is, um, count your blessings instead of numbering your complaints. And that has just reigned so true in my season because sometimes the complaints are easier to see, but we know the kind of God we serve. We serve a faithful God, my friends. Um, have hope. Live a life full of hope. We are one day closer. Right now, all of us are waiting. Jesus came once. He promises he is coming again. He has never failed us. When we choose to worship God in our seasons of waiting, we are worshiping a promise-keeping God. Mary ends with, he remembers his mercy. Mercy defined, not getting the punishment we deserve. We worship a God who has been so kind to us, so merciful to us. He has not forgotten you, even in the mundane and the busy schedules in the crazy life, in the sleepless nights, in the disappointment, our God is merciful. Respond always in worshiping him. When 
God turned Mary's world upside down, she gave him her emotions, her trust, her worship, and she also gave him her patience. Our last point, number four, Mary waited patiently on God. Verse 56. And Mary remained with her about three months and returned home. Being pregnant is stressful. All the changes, the unknowns, the morning sickness, you name it. Imagine being in Mary's shoes. She is pregnant and not by Joseph. She probably dealt with rumors, rejection, and gossip. And yet she waited patiently because she knew her God fulfills the promises. When pre- or her pregnancy was not easy, same with her delivery. She had to find a manger where animals live. Animals smell. Believe me, I live in Tulare. There are more cows than people. It is true. She didn't know which hospital Jesus would be born at or what she would have to travel all the way to a small town where her husband grew up. You guys, could you imagine being nine months pregnant and being like, oh, we're just going to take a journey over here. I don't want to go anywhere when I'm nine months pregnant. And yet Mary was just so faithful in her patience. She, oh, what she did understand is that she was going to play a small part in God's plan to bring the Savior of the world, to bring the Savior into this world. Nothing was easy, and yet Mary patient, and yet Mary's patient silence any obstacle that she faced. God gave her the strength. God will give us the same strength in the times that feel impossible. Some days, I wake up just missing old normal. Um, And a sweet friend texted me this, and it was just super encouraging. It said, God is not calling you to be strong. He is calling you to be willing. I'm fine. It's good. Um, When you wait on God, you glorify him because you are showing that the wait is worth it. You are putting your faith in knowing his promises will be kept. You are telling the world around you about God's character, but they're not going to understand it, dear friends. Another thing, when Jeremy was able to be a live liver donor, and this just makes me laugh, um, he maybe had to do another psych evaluation because he had never met Bill are the person he was donating to. The world just does not understand. They're like, what do you mean? You Like, is he paying you? No, the Lord told me, like, and we just, you just do the next right thing. And so that is what we did. And it allowed us to, um, not us. I, I take credit for the liver too. It's fine. Um, it just allowed us to be part of God's plan in the heart, but the world isn't going to get it. But it's so sweet because then there's another opportunity where we can say, God came to save sinners, and he loves you, and he is for you. Um, You are telling the world around you about God's character. We can trust him with his plan and in, in our lives, even when we don't get it. As we wait for the Lord, for the day when the Lord returns, we wait in eagerness, with expectation, and with hope. Do not grow weary. Galatians 6, 9, do not grow weary of doing good. Respond like Mary had responded. Worship him. In conclusion, God did not design our lives to be comfortable. Wait. But we are creatures of comfort, dear friends, but rather to be transformational. If you are a Christian in this room, your life and your plans have greatly been transformed because of God deciding to send his son to die and rise for us. Christmas is such a sweet season to reflect 
to tell and to teach our kids of what great lengths God went through to transform us. When we are saved, God gave us new hearts and a new home. He gave us purpose and transformed our lives into something beautiful. Living a transformed life is not a one-day event. It is a lifelong process. If you are in a season of waiting, know that God is worthy to be lived for, and you are not alone. Give him what Mary gave him. She freely gave her plans, her emotions, her trust, her worship, and her patience. Know that God loves you during the season. Let me pray. Lord, I just thank you so much for these ladies, Lord, and for um, where you have them. And whatever season they're going through, Lord, is not by mistake. We know that you are working, Lord. Please just give them the peace that surpasses all understanding, Lord. Um, I thank you for who you are and what you've done. In your son's name, amen.